In today's experiment, we are going to look at reactivity of metals. Metals are a category of elements that are usually shiny, ductile, and malleable. What this means is that they can uh, withstand large deformations without fracture. Uh, other properties of metals or some physical properties of metals are that they can conduct both heat and electricity reasonably well. Most elements are actually metals. The periodic table actually arranges metals in a way that uh, we see the similarity in their properties. The elements are arranged in rows and columns. Every column is called a group and every row is called a period. Now, to help us identify these, we number the rows and there are actually, we actually number the columns. There are 18 columns, so the easiest way to handle this is just to number them from left to right, just starting with number one, number two, number three. So group one, we'll just call it, uh, basically the first column we call group one, the second column group two, and so on, up to group 18 for the 18th column. Now, the elements are arranged this way so that all the elements with similar properties are put in the same group. And if you look at the periodic table again, you'll see then that most of the elements are metals because uh, we see that there are a few nonmetals here on the right and to the top, and then the rest of the periodic table is essentially filled with metals. One uh, characteristic of metals is that they do react with acid to produce hydrogen and a uh, compound of the metal. For instance, if we take hydrochloric acid, it can react with zinc to give us hydrogen gas and zinc chloride. And what we'll be doing today is actually looking at reactivity of this metal or several metals with acids. Now, how do we know that a reaction or a chemical reaction is taking place? There are several things we can look for. One of the things we look for is a change in color or formation of a solid, which we call a precipitate. Here I have two clear solutions, so I'm pouring one there. They are not only clear, but they are also colorless. See, there's no color. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix these two together, and let's observe what happens. Now, we notice two things. A solid has formed, so we know that a chemical reaction has taken place because there's a solid or a precipitate has formed. Moreover, there's a color change. So another evidence of a chemical reaction is a color change. We can also observe uh, whether gases are produced. That's another example of a chemical change. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this solid, add it to a liquid, and observe what happens. So I've got some solid, I'm adding it to a liquid, and let's see. We can see several things here. First, we see that uh, the solid I put in is disappearing, so we can look at disappearance of reagents. We can see a lot of bubbling, so we know that a gas is being produced. We can actually, if you hold this, you'll find that it's actually very hot. I can't even hold it for a few seconds. So heat is also being produced. So here, this particular experiment shows us several things that we observe. Loss of material, production of gases, as well as production of heat. Another example of uh, evidence for chemical reaction is the emission of light. And so if you take, for instance, um, a magnesium ribbon and light it, you actually see a lot of light uh, emitted. So in today's experiment, you are going to do some chemical reactions, and I want you to bear in mind those things that I've told you when you are observing your reaction. I'll actually go ahead and uh, demonstrate one for you and try to remind you of the things to watch out for as you do the experiment. So today, the main objective, or the objective of today's experiment is to examine some factors that influence the reactivities of metals with acid. Now, you are warned about this in the first lab, Whenever you are working uh, in the lab, you always need to be safety conscious. And that is more so like today when we are doing experiments with acid. And don't forget that you need to wear your safety glasses. Now, the ones I'm wearing are OK. But if you don't have any, we've got these uh, available for you. You cannot do this experiment without wearing your safety glasses. So as I said, the objective of today's experiment is to examine some factors that influence the reactivity of metals with acid. So I'll demonstrate the first part of the experiment for you. The first thing we need to do is to get some acid. 
And so here's the container. And what you do, you have this auto pipetta. It's all been set for you. Okay, so don't adjust anything. All you do, go with your test tube there and lift this up once and then gently down once. Just that. Okay, and then I have my acid there. Do the same with the second test tube. So again, up and down, and we've got enough acid here for our reaction. So this is six molar hydrochloric acid. The next thing we want to do is to use zinc of different sizes. There's a zinc shot or zinc pellet, and then there's granular zinc, which is just a finer particles of zinc. Because remember now what you're trying to do is to investigate the effect of particle size in the reactivity of metals with acids. So to do that, again, take a weighing bot, go with this to the container where you have your zinc, and just take one scoopful of zinc. So just need that and put it in your weigh bot. and then put it back in the container there. Now we've got our zinc there. That's granular zinc. Now we want to take a zinc shot, just one of these, and put it in our weigh bot. Then we can carry this to our workbench. What we want to do now is to basically add zinc uh, particles to one of these, that's a granular zinc, and then zinc pen led to the other. We want to add them as close a time to each other as possible because you don't want to add one, let the reaction go on for some time, and then add the other one. That's why we get all our things ready before we start adding. Okay, now take this granular zinc and carefully put it in that container. And take this also and put it in that container. And observe. The various things you want to look for is, can you see any fumes coming off? Are there any bubbles? How big are the bubbles? How fast are they coming out? Hold the, these uh, tubes. Are they getting any warm? And you can actually even test, because remember we said that when metals react with uh, acids, they produce hydrogen gas. We can test for that by taking a match and carefully bringing it close and I don't know that you heard that, but there was a popping sound. I can do that again. It was louder than it was the second time. But that's an additional test uh, for the reaction. So make sure that you look for all those things. Again, look, is your material disappearing? You need to have all these evidences of reactions. So that will be the first part of the experiment. The second part of the experiment is to look at the effect of acid concentration. So we are going to use granular zinc and hydrochloric acid. You will have three different concentrations of hydrochloric acid. You'll have six molar, and you'll have two molar and 0.5 molar. When I say molar, I'm basically talking about a concentration. This is a, a unit for concentration. Uh, basically, it tells us how much acid we have in a given solution of water. So when I say six molar and say two molar, it means that the six molar solution has got three times as much acid as the two molar solution in a given volume of liquid. So the larger the number, the more acid you have in your solution. So the, that's what you'll do in the second experiment. Test for the effect of acid concentration. We'll move on to the third experiment then, which will be looking at reaction of different acids. So again, we'll take granular zinc, and we want to react it with uh, four different acids. We'll use acetic acid, hydrochloric acid, phosphoric acid, and sulfuric acid. All these will have a concentration of six molar. Then again, do your reactions and observe. And the last reaction we want to do is to look at reaction of different metals. So far, we've, we've worked with zinc. What you'll do then now is to work with four metals, calcium, lead, granular zinc, and magnesium, and use two molar hydrochloric acid and see what the effect is going to be. Once you've done that, basically that will be the end of the experiment, but we need to clean up. 
Remember, we've got acid waste here and metal waste, and you have to clean up all this stuff, dispose of them in uh, the fume hood. We have a waste solvent or a waste material disposal can, and that's where you'll dispose your material, and then just clean up everything and check out. And again, I hope that you enjoy today's experiment. Mm -hmm.